Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering IBM Edge 2015, brought to you by IBM. Welcome back to EDGE 2015. This is Dave Vellante. Jamie Gamak is here with Tim Kluberantz, and Jamie's the CEO and president, and Tim is the solutions architect at Evolving Solutions out of Minneapolis. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. It's good to see you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, Jamie, let's start with you. Um, president, CEO, tell us about Evolving Solutions. You know, what's our 20th year in business, so we're celebrating a little bit of an anniversary here. Congratulations. And, uh, thank you very, very much. It's awesome, 20 yep. years. Absolutely. <laughs> the, uh, uh, the partnership with IBM has certainly evolved over the 20 years. We've got about 70 employees and uh, roughly $100 million in, uh, in annual revenue. The bulk of that is, uh, is with IBM. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, a lot of shift, a lot of changes. As I said, in the partnership over the uh, over the 20 years, for the positive. Hey Tim, what's your role at uh, Evolving? Yep, I'm a solution architect, and uh, my role is to to help customers. We try to focus a little bit more on uh, on bridging that 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 gap for customers between the the sales side and the technical side. So I uh, focus on building relationships with customers, and uh, and we. We spend a lot of time doing that at Evolving, so. So let's roll back 20 years, wow. The world was a different place, wasn't it? You know, <laughs> I mean, it was a main, mainframe centric was shifting into client server, um, no internet really to speak of, right? Yep. A little bit. Certainly no Facebook, no social, no mobile, <laughs> no, no Waze. You're <laughs> right. right. No, who could have predicted this, yeah. <laughs> So. Yeah. And even the pace of the change right now is happening so dramatically. I mean, it's almost a uh, you know a hockey stick. The first ten years were we were still selling IBM products. Still, there's there's some the predecessors to the uh, uh, to the today's power technology. The RS6000 was yeah. a big part of our portfolio even at that point in time. But the pace of change that is occurring today uh, in the uh, in the market and it's driven by the customers, of course, is uh, is dramatic. And we have to be able to adapt to that change. I mean, almost quarterly, we are really listening to what the clients are telling us and, uh, and helping them on their journey. That's where the, the Tims come in, really to, uh, to add value to the clients in the, uh, the infrastructure level of their environment. So, Jimmy, you've decided to sort of invest in a role of a solutions architect. Um, Tim, I want to dig in a little bit more. So how do you spend your time mm -hmm. with, with clients? Yep. Um, it varies. Uh, our architect team does do implementations and stuff as needed, but we spend a lot of time um, just understanding what the business requirements are for our customers. Um, we spend a lot of time uh, training and helping them understand what new technologies are available from IBM and our, our partners. And uh, and then we, we stay engaged throughout the whole process to make sure that they continue to, you know, continue to, you know, find a solution that's right for their business needs. And are there are there industries where you specialize? You know, we gravitate. We're really a cross industry partner. We gravitate towards those industries that are consuming technology. One of them being healthcare. Uh, and it's not that we have deep skills in any specific facet of healthcare other than the fact that just through repetition we have an awareness, uh, a deep awareness of healthcare environment. So we're able to replicate uh, capacity needs, capacity planning, really understanding some of the key core applications that uh, uh, are uh, driving healthcare growth. And if you think about the Minneapolis, St. Paul area, which is uh, our, our home base and uh, we have a significant presence, there's some large healthcare institutions in that geography. So it's been a natural uh, uh, evolution. So let's us. take healthcare. Um, it's, I guess, I guess people say it's recession proof, so during the downturn, you know, it maybe didn't get as affected. You know, the healthcare industry and the government were sort of still spending. Um, yet you had the Affordable Care Act come into play and that's caused dislocations. 
Historically, docs haven't been big consumers of technology, although that's changing, certainly with, with mobile. So what are you hearing from you know, that constituency? How are they dealing with meaningful use? And what does it mean ultimately for the architecture? So Jimmy, maybe you could start about, what, do you, what are those patterns that you're seeing in healthcare? Yep. So it, it, the consumption of technology is accelerating in that industry in, in all facets of it. I mean, you look at some of the companies up there and how they're branching out into other segments of healthcare through acquisitions. It really is all about data, the accumulation of data and what they can do to act on that data. Ironically, the technology side of healthcare never saw a significant downturn, and the reason was is because the automation uh, was still needed throughout the, uh, you know, the 2000s. I mean, they were on a growth curve to accumulate data, understand data through analytics, what they can do with it, and also they, the, the healthcare companies, at least in the uh, Twin Cities, and I suspect uh, throughout North America, I mean, they're on an acquisition, an aggressive acquisition pace. So meaningful use and other things, those are all elements of what was driving the growth, but it really is, uh, uh, it really is all facets of the business that are, that are increasing and utilizing technology much different today than they were in the past. And the, uh, uh, the TIMS, our, our solutions architect role, it is such a significant part of our participation and investment in that market I think Tim probably spends, uh, uh, you know, 50%, maybe 75% of his time with some of our healthcare clients solving problems. Mm -hmm. You know, Tim, if I if I roll back, I think about the Cube started in 2010, so we're sort of five years in now. And if you think about the cloud discussion back then, mm -hmm. it was very bifurcated. You had the Amazons of the world saying public cloud, working with developers, and you had the rest of the enterprise world saying private cloud. And now it's evolved. And they talked about hybrid cloud but it really you know, wasn't real. Mm -hmm. And it seems like it is now. So as a, an architect, what are you seeing in cloud? How are you connecting the public cloud, the hybrid cloud, and the private cloud dots? Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a, well, depending on the industry, of course, I've always been talking about healthcare, there's, there's a sort of a, a, a battle between protecting data as well and making data available on a cloud level and for analytics type applications, et cetera. So, plus the other, the other thing that we deal with a lot is just the, the rapid growth of the data. And, and there's some, there's some tough, um, there's some tough, um, tough decisions to be made about how you get the data to the cloud, how we process it. Um, so my role, essentially, is to help bridge some of those and to, and to make sure that customers are able to grow that infrastructure at the pace that it that their data is increasing. So what do you see as best practice? Because people are concerned about putting their data in the cloud, although some yeah. people aren't. Um, people don't, you can't move big chunks of data. Mm -hmm. it's, it's too much data, right? It come, brings you to a grinding halt. So how do you solve that problem? You obviously have to think through, like you said before, the business requirements, you know, the, the data governance, edicts, et cetera, but how yeah. do you solve that That's problem? A, it's a Tough question to answer because it's a little bit different for every customer depending on what type of data that is and, and how sensitive the data is. So I'm not sure I could say there's one solution that's right for every customer. And I, I suppose that's part of the benefit from evolving having a, a team of architects that provides that bridge so that we can help find the right solution for each customer. So a customer says, I like this cloud. My mm -hmm. CEO's all over it. The CFO wants to shift CapEx to OpEx wants to outsource mm -hmm. you know, a lot of it, except this little piece over here, which is our family jewels. So help me. <laughs> Do you hear that a lot? Um, or is it more the other way of people saying, you know, we're going to use the cloud for some de test and dev, maybe some analytics, you know, we'll throw some you know, stuff in the cloud, but help us protect our core assets. Yeah, we have, we have customers that are sort of dabbling, I suppose is a good way to put it. Yeah, so that's um, the sort of more common use case, is that right, um, you guys? No, I think, I think they would like to invest more in it, but they're kind of cautiously entering in some uh -huh. of that space, and 
Um, other customers are going much more full into it, but but I think that's a little more rare at the moment. But yeah. That's and how do you, how do you look at that, Jamie? As the the chief executive of of a company that has for 20 years been pretty basically on premises infrastructure in, in place, how do you look at the cloud? How do you turn it into an opportunity? So we've made an investment in the cloud. We have a dedicated group that is doing nothing but working cloud opportunities. And I mean, it's our responsibility and our goal to help our clients on that journey to the cloud. And that doesn't mean just taking them and moving apps to the cloud. What it really is, is helping them understand uh, what's the benefit of going to the cloud? What are the security risks of going to the cloud? You alluded to the fact that there are the, the family jewels. There are applications that are going to remain on premise. There are applications that are much more logically placed in the cloud, and then there are some that are going to be shared. There are the compute may be in the cloud. This is, this is what we're seeing or hearing more and more frequently, where the compute may be in the cloud, but the storage, the data, may actually still mm -hmm. reside in a private enterprise. So it really, there isn't a, a one size fits all, but the more uh, sensitive the data, so compare healthcare to manufacturing, the more likely that that data is going to be owned and privately held in, a, in an on-premise environment. And, and your relationship with IBM extends to the cloud offerings? It I mean, does, Soft absolutely. Layer and Bluemix? And yep, all of the above. You private so label that, or is it? Uh, we don't as of this point in but time. But you could, absolutely. right? That's part of the business we, model. Absolutely, so Watson, Bluemix, Soft Layer, I mean, they are all uh, part of our strategic growth initiative. And you know, it, the, the key is our infrastructure business is growing grew at uh, 65, 70% last year, and which is, which is uh, for a 20 wow. year old company, is, uh, is phenomenal. Now, it, it's, it's interesting because you have kind of a bifurcation of, the, uh, of the, the business partner market, and it really is, for the, for the first time, there is a strong recognition of those companies that are investing, have invested over time in deep resources, and then you have the other side of that bifurcated why, those partners that have chosen not to invest are most likely not going to be box able sellers. to survive. Absolutely. You know, for years, we love the box sellers. It's great, great, moving boxes, moving boxes, but if you don't transform, you know, you're going to be driftwood you in are the tsunami. Um, correct. That's interesting, that's, a, that's an interesting call you have to make about private labeling or not. You got the great IBM brand, you got a hundred million dollar company, building your own brand, so be interesting to watch how Absolutely. that you know, proceeds. So good luck with that. Uh, we got to go, we got to leave it there, but thanks for coming on theCUBE and congratulations for all your success, amazing story. And uh, really appreciate your time. Yeah, Sounds good, thank much. you very much. We all appreciate right. your time. You're welcome. Uh, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back to wrap. This is Dave Vellante, this is theCUBE. We'll be back right after this word.